information security policy. So what is it? What does it cover? What does it look like? What's in it? And how can you create one? Let's jump straight in. So when it comes to policy documentation, all of our documents are going to have some standard markup on there. What you're going to see is uh, document control. So you're going to see when changes were last made to a document, what changes were made and who made them. In the header and the footer, you're going to have some control marking. So we have the classification of the document, whether it's confidential, public or internal. And um, we have the version number. Uh, so we always know which version we're looking at. At the bottom of uh, each page, we have the date that this policy was last reviewed. And also we like to assign our documents to owners. So we have the document owner. So what you're going to see in here, we have a contents page. So this is what we're going to go through and which we're going to create and cover off. And let's jump straight in. So our policy will have a purpose. Our policy requires a scope. Now, as a rule, our policies will apply to anybody that works with us for us, be that internal or external. You've got a basic principle uh, statement around what the principle is of the policy. So the information security is managed based on risk. Uh, it's a risk based system. Legal and regulatory requirements, uh, many of which are placed upon our business. And obviously the business needs, business needs is going to drive uh, the requirements for our policy. At the beginning of the policy, we have our chief executive or our senior management uh, statement. This is some standard wording and verbiage that, that you can have. Uh, obviously, you would probably want to tweak that to yourselves. But what this is doing is demonstrating senior leadership commitment to our information security management system. And that's going to be signed and dated. So it's a great, uh, great piece uh, to, to have and one that the auditors will look at. Then we have our high level introduction uh, that talks about what the policy is going to cover. And we define what information security is. So you're going to see the three tenets of confidentiality, integrity and availability of data come up time and time again, uh, often referred to as CIA or the CIA triad. And this defines what they are. I like to use um, layman's terms. So it's about giving uh, the right people the right access to the right data at the right time. What we're then going to do is we're going to lay out what our information security objectives are. Again, this document comes pre-populated, but you need to understand for yourselves what, what your standard objectives are. As a rule, they are about reducing and managing risk and addressing legal and regulatory compliance uh, and uh, implementing a culture of information security within your organisation. Then we look at the framework. So the information security policy, this document, uh, the way that I like to work is I like to have individual policy documents uh, for defined policy areas. Uh, the reason being is that those documents then can be handed out uh, to the relevant departments or relevant individuals within an organisation. And not everything that is in every policy is going to be relevant to everybody. Um, so I don't see a particular use, including, for example, network security uh, in, in a policy that's going to go out to a HR department. So what we have is we have this high level overarching information security policy that then references uh, the framework, i.e. the sub policies uh, that our organisation is going to adhere to. And as you can see on here, there are a number of those ranging from our data protection policies, access control. We go through things like acceptable use policy. Uh, we've got malware, antivirus, we've got information transfer, cryptographic key management, document and record policy uh, as well. So a number of policies that make up our information security management framework. Not all of them are needed by all businesses, um, but as a rule they are, uh, and they're included and you, and you would edit that appropriately. Then high level, we discuss what the roles and responsibilities are. Now these are documented within the ISMS, the Information Security Management System, in more detail. But here we're talking about the high level roles. We talk about monitoring uh, and our monitoring of compliance to the policies and, and how that's going to be handled. And then we talk about our legal and regulatory obligations. And again, referencing that we may take those seriously. And those are included in our uh, legal register, uh, which again is a more detailed document. But, uh, but here with the information security management policy, we're, we're acknowledging that, that they are important to us. We touch upon training and awareness and uh, that again we're trying to drive a culture of uh, information security and good best practice within our organisation and we talk about the fact that we documented the competencies and the uh, level of understanding um, and skills that we have within our organisation. 
So that's your high level information security management, uh, sorry, high level information security policy in a nutshell. And every policy that we have then is tailed off with some, again, more controlled documentation that looks out how we're going to measure compliance to uh, the policy, how we're going to handle exceptions to the policy, and what we're going to do if we find a non com uh, a non-conformity, a non-compliance, and then we talk about uh, the continual improvement and how continual improvement is addressed. So that, in a nutshell, is your information security management policy.